scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let's discuss this God now. The first thing I want you to know about God is that the Bible records that God is infinite. Please listen. God is infinite. Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Please sit down. It says, There is no searching. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, notice now, the everlasting God, he calls him the Lord. Are we together? Three names at once. Everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He fainted not, neither is he weary. Then the Bible gives us a very profound information about God. That from the start of your journey, you should know that the best of your exploration will not do justice to who God is. He says there is no searching of his understanding. He leaves you with that disclaimer. That no matter how you are diligent, there is only a small portion of God you will end up knowing relative to the vastness of his person. You will never arrive in that journey. He encourages you to go ahead with your exploration, but he leaves you already with a message not to discourage you that this journey, you will never arrive in it. There is no end to the searching of God. Are we together? Now, that does not mean you should not start, but he's only informing you that you, you will, as you sojourn in learning and knowing God, you will come to the conclusion that there is no searching of his understanding. The second thing about God you need to know is that there are three qualities of God that stand him out above all men. The singular difference between God and man is not just that he's creator and man is the creature. No. That God is omnipresent, I have taught you. Omnipotent and omniscient. These are the three attributes of God he did not share with man. So when the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature, I hope you know that our partaking of his divine nature is not absolute, is shared. It is not every part of his divine nature we are brought into. No. There is a dimension of God that no man has tasted. His omnipresence, his omnipotence, and his omniscience to be omnipresent means to be everywhere at the same time there is no man in recorded history not from scripture and not from history who has been given the privilege of enjoying omnipresence where can i hide from your presence even if i go to hades the place of the dead the psalmist says still you are there the closest person who perhaps would have qualified to experience it was the psalmist but even him was not granted that access. He was only shown the things that would come prophetically. And yet that was in types and shadows. God is omnipresent, meaning all places at the same time. God does not have to move to see. He has the all-seeing eye. Right from where he sits, there is nothing. The Bible says even the hair on our head. You the owner of the head. How many hairs on your head? And yet the Bible says that eyes... He can see. He knows when one hair falls. Is he that idle? 
that he can count the hair even if it was one person as a project you will still fail I'm explaining certain things for you about God his omnipresence the ability to be everywhere at the same time number two God is omnipotent the word potent means all-powerful man is not all-powerful our dominion authority and power is derived it is always in partnership with the Holy Spirit in isolation to the Holy Spirit or in isolation to principles we do not have power the power that man wields whether scientifically or supernaturally is always derived please understand this so man is not omnipotent this is the reason why it is possible to pray for 100 people who are sick and sincerely even if you find 80% there might be one person you see that now yes there is a level of accuracy as far as the dispensing of power that no man has had yet attained unto the Bible tells us there is even a dimension of power reserved for an age that is not our own. He it says it's called the power of the age to come. But that through diligence and alignment, men can taste of that power even within this age. I am sure that those are the dimensions that will be imported to sponsor the end time revival. The power of the age to come. Are we together? God is only potent and then God is omniscient it was Apostle Paul who was mentoring the church in Corinth and he brought them into this understanding that we see in part and we prophesy in part can you imagine that that means the best of our revelatory grace the best of whatever it is that we have is still a part and a portion this is profound we know in part and we prophesy in part like I taught you when we're discussing, can you imagine that I am now in this place, there are several overflows to the basement and perhaps outside and the many who are connecting from across the globe. Can you imagine that if I am to interpret the crowd of people here, I can only walk based on what my eye has seen. Do you know why you do not have eyes all over you? To remind you that you are finite finite in sight finite in vision you would think god would have put an eye like a crown all around you so that you don't have to turn to the back but even at that you will still be limited next time you are looking for the difference between man and god even if you do not know him know this for a fact that there are things he did not share with man it is what makes him exclusive god by himself he is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. You don't need to mentor God. There is no book in heaven where God reads to get more knowledge. No. All that are documented in heaven is for the saints. Are we together now? Yes. Who will mentor him? Have you ever seen him in a lecture room? Jesus only received knowledge and lecture when he became a man because he came as a pattern man to help men ascend to the heights of God but as God God does not know his knowledge is not progressive it is absolute all things come from him it is in his light that we see light so what you call past present and future is only a reality that was framed to help you relate with God the truth is that that reality does not exist with God God does not even dwell in the realm of eternity because eternity is still a function of time. It's just a summation of time without end. God lives beyond eternity. His realm is now. Hallelujah. All things are present before him. So what you call future and what you call yesterday, yesterday only left you. In God's mind, yesterday and tomorrow, his hands can reach into them. There is no difference. Technology has helped you to understand how God relates. You can rewind a movie. There's something called rewind. Is that true? There's something called fast forward. These are all agencies to help you manipulate time. So if you saw something and it skipped you, you can enjoy it and rewind it as many times. Unfortunately, that only happens with a movie, not your life. When it passes, it's gone. Only the God of heaven can reach back into time. Hallelujah. I wrote here and I want you to write, please. For our profiting and dominion here on earth, there are three aspects of God we must focus on. 
haven't established the fact that there is no searching of his understanding haven't established the fact that learning God and knowing God is an eternal pursuit that even in heaven there are series of lectures through all the ages that will keep helping us to know God where there is no darkness where there is no evil where Satan and all demon spirits have been dealt with a new age has come the activity in heaven will not only be worshiping God we will still be learning God knowledge for the believer remains are we together it will never come to an end there will never be anything like perfection of knowledge of God we will have perfect knowledge of all things as far as the world God created but not his person as far as his person is concerned we will learn him through all the ages what kind of a God is that there is no searching of his understanding ladies and gentlemen what you are learning tonight was a personal conclusion of my own journey I got to a point where I was not satisfied with my knowledge of God I was tired about talking about a God whose di certain dimensions I had not seen and many people asked me several questions and said apostle how come I want to know God but I don't know what to do for someone you say okay go and fast you will know God and I fasted and I still do not know God I want to know God another person says read your Bible he says no I understand all this I, I want to know him I want to be confident and then the Holy Spirit began to lead me through a journey that arrived at this message tonight that as far as the profiting of the believer is concerned on earth the interest of God as far as knowing him is only captured in three dimensions if you press to know these three things sufficient is that pursuit of God within the frame of this lifetime can I give them to you number one the first aspect of God that God desires all saints to know is his character please write when God mandates that we know him the first thing he demands that we know and understand about him is his character please write it down I'm taking away the confusion about knowing God every time the Bible demands that the Saints know God every time your hunger in the spirit presses that you know God I'm taking away the confusion the first thing you should press to know is his character Exodus chapter 33 18 and 19 his character Moses said and I beseech thee show me your glory Moses is crying now for the glory of God 19 and he said I will make all my goodness please say all my goodness what kind of description is that that means the goodness of God as an aspect of his character is even dimensional so when you claim you have seen the goodness of God is only an aspect of his goodness I will make all my goodness to pass before thee what did Moses ask for his glory the glory of God is all that makes God God and he says no Moses I discern your heart I know what your heart seeks to understand I will let all my goodness ladies and gentlemen Genesis to Deuteronomy came from this encounter just an aspect of God's goodness being revealed was what Moses saw and from that encounter five books came out Moses was not there from the beginning he was not there all through the time of you know all through scripture Abraham and the rest he was not there yet look at the accuracy of his writing simply because a dimension of his goodness passed before him Isaiah chapter 40 we read 28 already let's do to 30 is God helping someone so when you know God you desire to know God the first thing you should pursue is the knowledge of his character verse 28 now has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not neither is he weary there is no searching of his understanding the Bible says 29 he giveth power whoever that he is giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength read 30 with me even the youth shall faint and be weary are we together and then he says that uh, 
young men shall utterly fall. The young men shall utterly fall. Look at what God does. He gives power to the faint. To them who have no might, he increases strength. These are all expressions of his character. We are piecing together the various manifestations of his character. And with the imagination of an artist, we are drawing a personality using his character. Are we together now? As an artist, work with me. If I tell you, draw a man for me. Give me a pictorial image of a man who is kind, loving, probably holding his children. Now I'm helping your mind to be creative. Are we together now? As an artist, immediately you can use a man's character as the tools to paint a picture of him. That even though you have never seen him, I can describe for you a man. And using the character of that man, you can go into an office and start looking and you say, this most likely is a man. Based on what you said, the man always likes to wear a white suit. It is usual for him to wear a white suit. Most likely, if he sees you, he will greet you and say, have you eaten? I have fed you with the knowledge of that man's character. When you step into that office, you are looking at everybody who behaves like that. And when you suddenly find a man coming with a white suit and says, young man, have you eaten? You can with confidence say, good afternoon, Mr. James. And he says, afternoon, how are you? How did you know the knowledge of his character? Are you learning now? The character of God is very profound. In Psalms 145, Let's go to verse 8. Please walk with me. The Holy Spirit is teaching us something now. The Lord is gracious. I'm showing you a concise display. You see why this psalmist guy was very powerful. I don't know what business he did with God. But this guy explored God. He, he was him. The Psalms gives us about the rich capture of the entire character of God. You really want to understand the character of God. In fact, even more than the Pauline epistles. The psalmist, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger. You are describing God now and of great mercy. Start working with your imagination. This is the God you are called to serve. Verse 9, the Lord is good to all. Wow. And his tender mercies are over all his works. There is a dimension of God's compassion that everything he created must experience. No wonder even Satan has a length of time before his destruction. This is consistent with how God works. Meaning it is not usual for God to just judge and destroy people because he's angry. God always allows time for repentance. If you know this about God, certain dimensions of fear dies immediately. Verse 10. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and the saints shall bless thee. Please be patient. Let's read. 11 now media let's work together they shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of your power verse 12 to make known to the sons of men his mighty act and the glorious majesty of his kingdom uh-huh it says thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endured throughout all generations 14 the lord upholded all that fall and raised up those that be bowed down He's painting the character of God. The unknown God is now beginning to find form in your mind. The unknown God is, a, is beginning to be described so that he's no longer, you are not building an altar devotion and worship to an unknown God. Every time you say, Father, your mind, your spirit is connecting to somebody. A, a, you have used his attributes to paint a picture that your mind can relate with. Let's finish that scripture. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfieth the desire of every living thing. 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon him. This alone gives you confidence in prayer that it is inconsistent with his character to be far from you while you pray. That every time he hears prayer coming from a sincere believer, he is nigh them that call upon him and then to them that call upon him in truth. So if you are calling upon him and it looks like he's not hearing, verify truth in what you are doing. 
he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him and also will hear their cry and will save them. The last verse, the Bible says, The Lord preserveth all them that love him, and all the wicked will he destroy. That means there is gain in loving God. The Bible says preservation is an advantage that is given those who love God. Hallelujah. Say his character. You want to know God accurately? The first part of call is to seek to know his character to seek to know his character right for reference we're not reading but psalm 103 from verse 1 to 22 but allow me read 1 to 5 with you psalms 103 1 to 5 hallelujah we sing it as a beautiful hymn unfortunately still to an unknown god bless the lord he says all my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name verse 2 bless the lord O my soul and forget not his benefits say benefit that means god never calls the seed of jacob to seek him in vain every time you keep seeking god know that you are seeking him number one because you love him but that he's benevolent enough to leave benefits and there are five of them number one the bible says verse three now who forgiveth all thine iniquities. That is the first benefit. Number two, who healeth all thy diseases. Number three, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Number four, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. On in some growth. Ah, I can come boldly. I know that he heals. So when Jesus showed up, when he saw sick people, to prove that God loves to heal, to prove that God loves to forgive. He says, your sins are taken away from you. And the people did not understand what he was doing. It was more than just speaking to the man. He was validating the character of God. If Jesus never made that statement, we would doubt God's ability to forgive. Because it must be captured in the life of Jesus if it is true. He forgives. He heals. He delivers. He crowns you with loving kindness and with glory, tender mercies. And verse 5, the Bible says he satisfies your mouth with good things. I don't know about you, but ladies and gentlemen, my Christian life changed when I truly understood the character of God. I took out time to study. Are we together? I can teach you about a God that I know and your entire theology, your praise, your worship, your attitude will reflect the description of God that you have been taught. Are we together now? There are songs that when I sing, I believe what I'm saying because I have an idea by the Spirit, quickened by the Holy Spirit. I know the kind of God that I'm speaking to. Hallelujah. I've told you this. I know that God loves me. I don't know what he did to me, but I have been so indoctrinated by the love of God for me. If I hear a voice here and he says, I love you, I will reply him and say, thank you. I know he was speaking to me. Even if it's not my name that is called. Are you that confident about the love of God? No wonder the apostle said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let that consciousness remain with you. Dear preacher, let me tell you, when you understand the character of God, there is no limit to what you can do. He, Jesus, representing God, said, I will never leave you. Is that true? He says that a comforter will come. I know that I am never alone. The character of God has given me confidence. When men say there is a casting down, I say there is a lifting up. God loves me. God loves me. I am not only a child of God, I am evolving in experience to becoming a friend of God. And most people have no idea that being a friend of God is a noble status. Not many people in scripture were ever called a friend of God because there is a friend that even sticks closer than a brother. Do you know what it means to be a friend of God? That means God takes away the restraint as far as showing you the mysteries and the secrets that are concerning your life and any territory. When you become a friend of God, it becomes impossible for God to visit a territory and not consult with you not because you are going to give him permission shall i hide this from my friend abraham 
I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Hallelujah. If you have a vision about me today and you see me dying, and you say, Apostle, I saw an obituary, I saw you dying. It's not whether you are fake or real. No matter how real you are, I will love you and congratulate you and hug you and say, thank you for showing me this. But there is something I know about God. Hezekiah knew this about God. And even when a genuine prophet came and said, put your house in order, I'm sorry to tell you, you will not recover. He was only a messenger. The Bible never calls Isaiah a liar. Isaiah was a prophet with integrity. But Hezekiah said, I've listened to you. Go. And he turned his face to the wall. He says, God, remember, there is something I know about your character. Let me tell you this. Fear will give you heart attack and kill you for nothing, except you know the character of God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou, hold on, hold on, who is the thou? Omnipotent, omniscient, thou art with me. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I expect favor every day of my life. That is not the basis of my walking with God. But I know that there is no genuine love without giving. And since his love is eternal, his favor and his benefits must be eternal. They go hand in glove. This, I'm sharing with you my orientation about God. Hallelujah. There are many of us who are still worshiping an unknown God. And while God has positioned us as men of God to help give perspective to your knowledge about God, nothing will truly give you confidence until you are guided to know the character of God. There are men that if they tell you anything about them, the first thing, you will be glad to say sorry later, but you will say, I know this person. Forget it. You are just talking nonsense. Hallelujah. Ah, this man collected a bribe of 5,000. This man that I know, well, we are all human, but until proven otherwise, I know this director, he will not bribe. Do you know God enough to stand and, and tell the dream that you saw, that in that dream, you saw everybody going down, and a spirit appears and tells you God said, you say, uh, 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 hold on, which God? If it's another God, that's fine. But to me, my altar is not to an unknown God. My altar is to a loving God, a compassionate and merciful God. And he can arise as a warrior. So when the devil comes to threaten you like, like, like the, the patriarchs of old, you can arise. The fullness of my days I will fulfill. I lay me down and I slept for this same God sustained me. Hallelujah. He upholds all things, including the gates of the grave, by the word of his power. Hmm. For I am a man under authority, the centurion said. I know the integrity of the Roman government. And on the strength of my consciousness of their power and their integrity, I can say to one, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he cometh. Jesus, I know you. You are a man under authority. And Jesus said, I have not found this kind of faith, this orientation. No, not in Israel. Can I tell you, I used to live a life full of fear and uncertainties, but something about the character of God gave me stability. Apostle, what gives you hope that Koinonia will remain serving the purposes of God and rising? If I tell you because I'm anointed, I gave you a foolish answer. That is too small an answer to sponsor longevity in a world that you do not know. I don't know the future, but there is something I know about God. Alpha, Omega. God, when he starts a thing, he's able to finish. Number two, there is something I know about God as revealed by the apostles. He says, listen carefully. He says that I, how did he put it now? I'm persuaded. Huh? Help me with that scripture now. My mind is trying to get the scripture. Yes. That he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day 
Do you know? Yes, thank you. I know whom I have believed. That's what the scripture I was looking for. And I am persuaded. It says, faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. So when we start our building project, no matter the millions of dollars, faithful is he that call it, who will do it. You will watch with shock and with wonder as the faithful man arises. Why do I know that every day you will keep coming to be blessed as much as, you know, this platform remains? Do you know why? Because everything God gives endures. Ladies and gentlemen, are you building your life on sand or are you building it on a rock? I know that I am an eternal blessing. Why do I know that? Because God is not a man that he should lie. And when he called Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, 2 and 3, he said, I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curseth you. And then he says, thou shalt be a blessing. And he says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Galatians 3, 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Everything he told Abraham routed to Christ. Christ is my reality today so I am a blessing I cannot be a curse any nation and any place is a blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord every time I step into a nation I step in with a spiritual shout of Hosanna It's always a triumphant entry because it is blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord your spiritual life will change when you understand this hallelujah my life changed when I understood the character of God. Another revelation about God, that he's a lifter of men. Ah, yeah. If you ever doubt him, look at the person speaking to you. How dare you say God does not lift? God is a lifter of men. Like he's lifting you now. I said like he's lifting you now. It doesn't matter who believes it or who does not believe it. That is none of your business. Like he's lifting you now. Ah. By your spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat The resurrected King Is resurrecting me In your name I come alive There is something about God that I know. There is something about the lifter that I know. My family may be the lowest, but I know something about God. I am not serving an unknown God. My altar, my devotion is not to an unknown God. He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Hallelujah. Hear me. When naysayers come to you and say you've been serving God for 20 years, what is the benefit? God rewards, he does not pay salary. It's salary that is monthly. God's reward may look like it's not coming, but in one day, after 20 years, even if you are Abraham, it may take 25 years, but ladies and gentlemen, when the rewarder comes, he will come with his reward and his benefits and make your life a praise to the nations. Hallelujah. For many years we served God and gave him everything. And there was no comeliness and nothing in our lives that looked like God rewards. But something about his character. For someone you have been praying and fasting and pressing in life and ministry because God said he's giving you the mantle and the mandate of a deliverer. Do not allow ignorant person confuse you about this God you are serving. The rewarder is on his way to you. Yours is to be diligent. Others were bribing in the office and you refused to bribe. Now you are feeling stupid because you would have lived in a duplex by now. You would have had cars if only you cut corner. I'm taking away the haziness from this God. He is not an unknown God. He can be known using the vista of his character. 
you can know God by knowing his character it is true that God destroys but who does he destroy let me tell you three categories of people in the Bible that God destroys number one enemies and when God destroys enemies it's not just something that happens enemies there let me define for you who God's enemies are this is not my discussion but I want you to know <laughs> God's enemy is not just the person who fights you God's enemy is anybody who perpetually interrupts the manifestation of his will God's definition of an enemy is not based on sentiments or biases you can become God's enemy if you consistently become an interruption to his will if he loves you because he's your you're his child he may not judge you in terms of throwing you but you will be edged out of the position that creates that interruption by giving your bishopric to another this is how God works I taught you this already our last discussion are we together now yes so when you say arise and let your enemies be scattered make sure you are not part of them first that's why the Bible talks about righteousness who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord don't just pray blindly and be a victim of your prayer you see that there's a lot of prayerfulness but in ignorance many people pray and miss you think just because you hate a man God hates the man you can be saying no God kill that director for me now help me and kill this man and God is saying no even though he's not my son he's a Cyrus that I've ordained and for as long as this system works it is in honor to them that you will rise there are Cyruses who, although they are not in Christ, they have, through the sincerity of their heart, aligned strategically to God's program. He will not take them out. He will leave them there. Their relevance is too important. This is a mystery. In God's end time program, you will see many people who are not of the faith playing sensitive roles. Because the most important thing, listen, when he appeared unto Joshua, do you not read your Bible? He said, are you for us or against us? What was the answer? He said, neither. No, this is not how I walk. I am for anything that is pro my will. So he said, who is on the Lord's side? Get my message, who is on the Lord's side? You have to, before you invoke God's judgment, verify your position. Many believers have become casualties of careless prophetic speakings. Lord, destroy anybody that stops your program. Destroy anybody. And God is saying, I'm warning you. You don't know what you are doing. Verify. Before Moses invoked judgment, he said, who is on the Lord's side? Let me give you a chance. If you are for him. And Elijah said, if God be God this way, if Baal, God will always give an opportunity for the will of man to willfully reject him before judgment is meted upon people. Are we together now? We see his character in Nineveh again as, as idolatrous and as stiff-necked and stubborn as they are. He sent Jonah. He loved Jonah, but Jonah's life went down as a genuine prophet. You don't have to be fake to destroy. You just have to be out of the will of God. Many good people will be corruptors of God's program simply because they do not understand the power of alignment. This is not about being real or fake. This is about being, if you are Jonah, rejecting the call of God and running away, you are putting Nineveh at ransom. God wanted to met out judgment or otherwise because he sits on a throne that is made of righteousness and justice. I hope you know that the very throne God sits on is an altar. Are we together? And Jonah was delaying the manifestation. He needed to give them a chance to choose him or otherwise. And look what God, the dealing that God had to go through with Jonah. Jonah entered the belly of the fish, caused people to lose until he repented, realigned, and the same instruction again. And he went to Nineveh. Jonah's refusal was because of something about God he knew. He knew that God was merciful and he hoped that his delay would make God angry and punish because God does not forbear with iniquity indefinitely. So he was running as a strategy that the evil will continue to rise as an indignation and God will be angry and punish them. But God said, Jonah, go. And the moment Jonah spoke to them, the king said, everyone, beast and man declare fast and Jonah was angry go and read your Bible the entire discussion was the anger of Jonah he said I know you this is what I, this is a, this is why I ran 
because I knew that if they now repent with all this wickedness they have done you will still forgive them do you know that about God if you know that about God you can still reach your unbelieving grandfather after doing witchcraft for 35 years you can still tell him before you pass on to glory let me give you a chance to love Jesus and he says you don't know how many people have killed he said it does not matter the moment you declare the Lordship of Jesus over your life the Bible says there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness hallelujah please be seated the character of God is someone learning explore the character of God as a preacher as a businessman as a family man and certain fears will die your confidence will be restored like that of uh, those who were in Bible days the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is largely powerless in conviction because there is something about the character of God we do not know number two what is the second aspect of God we must explore his ways please write his ways his ways Psalm 25 4 and 5 you want to know God second to the knowledge of his character the second thing you need to understand is how he operates his character talks about who he is his ways talk about how he operates the secret to discernment in addition to the gift of discernment by the Spirit is a thorough knowledge of the ways of God when you know how God acts you will know how he does not act show me thy ways O Lord teach me thy paths lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation on thee do I wait all day never forget this scripture Psalm 25 4 and 5 it says show me your way teach me your path ladies and gentlemen when there is inaccuracy in your representation of God and his purposes it may be derived from an inaccurate understanding as to how God works now please look up there are things God will never do even as prophetic actions number one God will never manipulate the will of men the first thing God gave man watch this now when God created man as the zenith of his creation he said let them have dominion from that time make reference to my teaching the series let them have dominion it became scripturally incorrect for God to superimpose anything upon man even at the detriment of your eternal destiny he still left you to choose you can reject him the Bible says as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him can you imagine that that God in his might full of love he's watching someone now go to hell and he's saying I give you an option you can choose me that you will leave when he set up the brazen serpent remember in the days of Moses he said the instruction was to look and leave I cannot force it on you when he met the people who needed healing he asked them how do you see a man who has been impotent a man a woman with the issue of blood and all kinds of people and then asked them what they wanted let me tell you this eternally God has bound himself to respect the will of men if you notice about the way God behaves his modus operandi as a leader you will never force people and usurp upon their will whether it's in ministry or whatever it is if I want to prophesy to you you have a right as an act of your volition to say I appreciate you but I'm not ready to receive and I must respect it if I know the ways of God hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you